Friends video game podcast where three lifelong friends talk about video games. I'm Chad Michael Linus. That's Holden DePardo. Hi. And you're you. And that's why we love you, lifelong friend. Mm -hmm. Is Mrs. Doubtfire this episode? Hello! (laughs) (laughs) I love Mrs. Doubtfire almost as much as I love that trailer you just watched for Godzilla, King of the Monsters. Wow, you must really, really like Mrs. Doubtfire. I fucking do. Dude. (laughs) Dude, dude. Welcome, everyone. We are... I feel like that movie wouldn't be allowed to be made nowadays. (laughs) Mrs. Doubtfire? No, it would be impossible for them to stand up Robin Williams' corpse and like have that be acceptable (laughs) as a movie with a dead person in it. Not what I meant, but I see what you go. I see what you did there. I yeah. see what you did there. Yeah, I took what you said and turned it into something funny. Hey, hey, hey. listen to me giggle, <laughs> Krusty the Clown. Hey guys, we've got a lot of good shit to talk about today. We got uh, talking all about how video games made Holden stab his dad. How? <laughs> <laughs> How video games caused me to run over a whole schoolyard full of children, and how video games caused each and every one of you to go home and put arsenic in your grandma's coffee. (laughs) But before we talk about any of that, we're going to talk about our Microsoft Quest log and all the fun things Microsoft has provided with us to talk about this week. The first of which is the official patent at pl- uh, let me just read the goddamn title. I was I started it out and I'm like, oh, I could take what I already said and somehow morph it into a sentence that makes sense about what I'm about to turn this into. And I said, and it worked. Mm, nope, guess worked. I had a stroke. <laughs> this Microsoft patent hints at plans to turn your smartphone into a handheld Xbox device. Coming from Vicky Blake from Eurogamer. I know I've mentioned this before. Do you remember Ricky Lake? No, you don't. You didn't watch TV as a kid. Ricky nope. Lake, for those of you who were, uh, she was like, um, I feel like her and Rosie O'Donnell and Roseanne Barr could all be three sisters from the same planet. Not the same mother, because they don't look enough alike like in the face. So they were all also born on Earth? <laughs> 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 wow, yeah. what a coincidence. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, Microsoft has a patent for a charging mechanism for a controller that actually basically... If you're familiar with Game Vice, if you uh, haven't worked in an electronics retailer store before that sold it, you might not be familiar with it. Unless you remember when they tried to sue the Nintendo Switch for copying their uh, design patent. <laughs> anyway, yeah. the Xbox controller looks like it'll work One similarly. of many like that. There is a few that are like that. Yeah. Where it's a controller that you stretch it apart. It's two sides, almost like two Joy-Cons that you kind of pull apart and they clamp onto the ends of your smartphone device. Mm-hmm. Those have, uh, according to the patent speakers, headphone jack, wireless audio, hint, hint, switch, hint, 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 give me my fucking AirPod support on Switch. <laughs> uh, but it'll only apparently work with xCloud games. So this looks See. like it might be Microsoft's little foray into the hardware part. I'm just, I assume it would also have some kind of, or pair well with the stand for your phone. No, shut up, Michael. Whoa. That's the first time I've referred to myself as Michael in almost a <laughs> decade. Woof. Whoa, that felt weird. <laughs> <laughs> Whoa. For anyone who doesn't know, I, my brain is poisoned. I'm dying of typhoid and I've been bedridden for six days. And so I might not speak good. Anyway. Well. To charge, you're right. As shown in the pictures in the patent, to charge, you take the the two ends, slide them together, and you charge it via USB in the wall. Surprise, surprise. Um, there will be an inside Xbox hosted on August nineteenth, next Monday, Montag, if you're in Deutschland or Austria, uh, and it's going to be the same day as Google Stadia's Connect, and it might be an opportunity for us to hear more about XCloud. Will we? Yeah. Who knows? Probably not. We'll probably hear more about something we don't care about for an hour and a half. <laughs> I I think that this controller sounds a lot like Google's Stadia controller, where it's going to connect on its own to xCloud to reduce latency. I think that would make sense, because why else would it have a headphone jack and its own wireless audio capabilities? What phone doesn't have wireless audio? You know what other problem that solves? What? Game Vice is allowed to do what they do because they focus solely on iOS. 
Mm-hmm. So they only have to make one with a lightning connector. But they have yep. to make three different models, one for mini iPad, one for regular size iPads, one for iPhones. Uh, so for this to be compatible with all of those different phones and tablets, they would need to make one that somehow fits the USB-C port of this one and the micro USB port of that one and the lightning port of this one. And what if that port is shifted to the left a bit or shifted to the right? So I think you're mm-hmm. right. This solves that problem. It's just like it's literally just a holder for your phone doesn't yep. interface with your phone at all. No. It also just make it easier to set up. You just plug it in or just attach it. No, you don't plug it, it in like, at all, Holden. That's the whole thing well, we just talked about. I was kind of going for like a plug and plug. <gasps> like it's easy. It just works that's what sex as a company like. that's... <laughs> <laughs> I mean, that could sound like really great sex. <laughs> <laughs> Almost sounds uh, I, like horse sex. <laughs> <laughs> Speaking of Gamescom, <laughs> oh, uh, there's a lot man. of stuff at Gamescom that's going to happen this year. I don't recall a Gamescom that's ever been this huge. A tweet from she said that. Uh, <laughs> a tweet from Jeff Keeley said on Twitter: "There's going to be 15 game publishers that will premiere and make announcements. They are and include." 2K, Activision, Bandai Namco Entertainment, Bungie, Capcom, Electronic Arts, Epic Games, Google Stadia, Coke Media slash Deep Silver, uh, Private Division, Sega, Square Enix, Sony Interactive Entertainment, which is specifically going to be Death Stranding. That's been confirmed. THQ Nordic, Ubisoft, and Xbox Game Studios. That's a lot. Do you know why it's going to have this much stuff? Because Jeff why? Keighley fucking made it happen. This is the first time there's ever there's never been like a press conference of sorts at Gamescom. It's mm. always just been a bunch of panels and things like that that you could go to but there's never been like a traditional e3 press conference or something like that but this opening night live is going to be something jeff Keeley puts on also interesting fact jeff Keeley's name is the way he spells it is closer to kieran knightley's name than the traditional american spelling of jeff Keeley. interesting yeah Hmm. um i'm excited for gamescom i think for the first time ever I've never really cared about Gamescom. Really? Yeah. Why? Because it's in Germany and because you're a racist? <laughs> yeah, I am racist against Germans. That's how that works. I said those as two separate statements. I said because it's in Germany and because you're a racist. Those are two ideas. <laughs> uh, they were definitely conflated, though. You're definitely saying this. Is that a thing. fat joke? Yes, it's a fat joke because <laughs> you are so much fatter than me that I can make fat jokes towards you. Jesse and I like to say, it's not a skinny joke. <laughs> <laughs> um, I'm very curious to what level of announcements we start to see. Like, this Death Stranding footage is going to be shown off. It's like, if they just did that Heartman trailer, um, where was, when was that? What event was that at? Heartman? Yeah, they had that trailer for the Heartman character. That was like two weeks ago, wasn't it? Yeah, but I'm saying if they just did that. I don't know if that was I an event like- or whether it was just they showed off the character. Doesn't matter. They just showed off that trailer. I, yeah. I feel like this next one's probably going to be another character trailer like that. Emma Stone. Emma Stone. As maybe. Grimace <laughs> with Voldemort on the back of her head, except it's Kevin Spacey. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, how my that balls. Would That's be a callback. The most impressive prediction of all time. <laughs> <laughs> Got that right. If that's real. <laughs> if Grimace. If Emma Stone is playing Grimace with Kevin Spacey on the back of its head like Voldemort under <laughs> Professor Quirrell's turban. And that's also how Kojima describes it exactly. <laughs> 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 then I'm going to tie a bunch of tiny nooses around a bunch of pigeons and push them off a ledge. And you could make that should be your game of the year at that point, too. Like, if it has that in it, the game speaks to you. Yeah. It just it's gets for me. you. It gets you. Um, um, yeah, I don't, I don't know what's coming. I don't know what's coming from it. I don't know what to predict. It's never happened before. Yeah. PS5. Like... <laughs> that's that's what we're getting. <laughs> I, I also feel like so many of these studios, what else do they really have to announce that's new, considering the next generation starts next year? Xbox Game Pass. Three new games coming. Two of them are exclusive to Game Pass at launch. Oh, I'm not just talking about Microsoft. Though. No, that's it. That's all. This, that's everything. All of these announcements are all encapsulated <laughs> in that. 2K oh, okay. is making a game. That was originally an electronic. Art. I'm not going to try and draw the line between them all, but you can. And Google Stadia is actually—it's surprised that that's actually what XCloud is. Yeah, yeah. 
It's, it's Bait all switch. actually Microsoft stuff. You yeah. bought the Founders um, Pack? <laughs> Surprise. Fuck you. <laughs> I bet we will not be seeing some of these new single-player games that Microsoft's apparently working on, though. What? Yeah, so more single player focused games are coming from Microsoft, Dennis Patrick at Game Ranks. This is a tweet kind of conversation between um Elf Nendez on at Elf Nendez on Twitter, which is just a you know, a person on Twitter who just tweeted out to Phil Spencer and he responded. She said uh, You're right, that is how Twitter works. No, but I'm saying it wasn't like a, a journalist or something like that. It was just like a random person. Yeah. I don't want to say random person, I was just trying to be like, hey, they're a person that exists on the planet. Well technically Twitter. they're an elf. They are. Oh, that's true. An elf <laughs> on Twitter tweeted out and said, hey, uh, Phil Spencer, can you at least tell me more single-player games are coming to Xbox in the years to come? Yes, I can confirm. With the additions to Xbox Game Studios, we have a lot of teams that have um, that have built, I think it's say built, built strong single-player focus games, and we want that to continue. That's good to hear. That is good to hear, especially because he could have just said yes. And literally, if mm-hmm. one more game in the future came out that was a single-player game, whether it was from Xbox or not, that would have counted. But no, he went yeah. out and he said yes, specifically coming from Xbox Game Studios. And it's going to be strong, and it's going to be single-player focused, and, and it's going to continue. And the games, in plural, And he said games, and he confirmed it. And they have a lot of teams. One and of them is- they're going to make additions not subtractions. <laughs> They're going to remove games from the library. They're going to remove single player games from existence. Yeah. Guys, we know you're so excited about Halo Infinite and to build on that excitement, we're taking Halo 5 out of the Xbox collection. You can no longer get it. But you know you're what game games. does not meet those criteria? What game is that? The Outer Worlds or as I like to call it, The Outer Wilds or <laughs> just what to build I also, the confusion. <laughs> what I also <laughs> like to call it the Outer Lands Festival that was just at in San Francisco last weekend. <laughs> Same thing, yes. Yep. Or uh, as I also like to call it, wait, no, Outer it's Lands is something first... different. Outside Lands is the festival. That's also what it's... I like to call it. It's also the very first event to video game adaptation. Never been done before. Event to? Event to video game adaptation. I think you missed what I said. Like you're it. adapting from a v- event to a video game. What's the, what's the event? Outer Lands you just mentioned. It's Outside Lands, Holden. Outside Lands. Whatever. I corrected myself. Also, when you said event two, I was like, where was the event number one? And when did they event? When did they adapt event two? What's going on? Anyway, uh, <clears throat> Microsoft sees the Outer Worlds as an exclusive franchise. It is technically a company. Obsidian Entertainment, who develops it, is now owned by Microsoft. Technically, a game that is Xbox owned. However, uh, the game is still coming to PS4 and Switch and PC and Xbox later. Uh, you mean but Switch future, later, Xbox at launch? That'd be funny. They at least on PS4 and Switch and PC, and then later on, it'll come to. Are Xbox. they out now? Well, guess they're the all coming later. There. Guess they're all coming later, Holden. I guess later, what I'm saying there is that I'm going to call you Holden PS4 later, Holden. <laughs> How do you know my my real last name? Xbox, PS4, and PC are all coming at the same time, and then later Switch is coming out. That's what I was getting at. The way you phrased it confused me, just like Event 2 confused you. See how Speaking to Game Informer, Matt Butt. <laughs> just kidding, it's Booty. The head of Xbox <laughs> Game Studios very different. sees <laughs> The Outer Wilds as, quote, an enduring franchise. He goes on to say, quote, I think that's a great universe they've created, and I think about what are the things that you need for a franchise to kind of bear that weight? Like, what can it withstand? It, is it a narrative? Is it a set of characters? Is it a universe that's big enough that you could start to add onto it? Um, so, yeah, I would say probably in the future, if you're looking for Outer Worlds 2, almost said Wilds, if you're looking for Outer Worlds 2, you might want to have an Xbox for that one. Because they're starting to That'd think of it as call. exclusive. Yeah, I, there's not really... <clears throat> are there big RPGs that are exclusive on PS4? Yeah. What ones? I don't know. I said it just assuming that there would be. <laughs> I don't think that there is. Final Fantasy VII Remake. Yeah, well, there's rumors it's going to come to Xbox, but they've denied but they're it. Wrong. But it's not going to come out. Um, Yeah, outside of that, that's it. Nino Kuni. I think the second one, though, came to Xbox One as well. I could be wrong. Let me see. It did just come to Switch. 
the first one got remastered and came to Switch. Uh, yes, they exist. Holden, Michael, McGillicuddy, Depardo, the third, <laughs> later Hosen. Let me see. You're I'm getting an Xbox right this year. Dude, you're getting a Dell. Um, it was Microsoft Windows and PlayStation 4. So, yeah, it was a console exclusive on PS4. Console exclusive. Did you, what did you Google? Did you Google RPGs? No, I just did looked you Google at Nino Rocket Propelled Grenades. That's exactly what I Googled. And it brought me to the Wikipedia page for Nino Kuni 2 Revenant Kingdom. How crazy is that? When I was a kid, I used to always be confused why an RPG in a video game, like a shooter, I was like, I don't understand. Why is that gun named after a role playing game? <laughs> dumb, dumb, dumb. It's just because you didn't know a lot about guns, which is funny because you play video games. You think you know all about guns, oh no my matter God. what games you Guess play. Guess what I played this week that had guns in it? I is played it called Marvel Ultimate Alliance 3? Oh, Marvel wait a second. Ultimate Alliance 3. Yeah, I played as Deadpool a little bit, who had guns. <laughs> and uh, that's what, as we alluded to earlier, made me go run over a bunch of kids, I guess. <laughs> oh, wait, no, I have to Because that's what them. Captain America would do. It has to do. involve guns. Um, Marvel Ultimate Alliance 3. Yep, beat it. Remember how I said, mm, not going to finish Marvel Ultimate Alliance 3. But he did. Guess who was dying of typhoid for, typhoid for six days? Uh, bedridden and had nothing to do. So I'm like, you know what? I will go fail that boss battle one more time and change the difficulty to an easier difficulty <laughs> and then continue to fight the next five bosses, barely making it through, the, through them, even on easy difficulty. Was it worth it? Let me work it. All Put right. my thing down, flip it, and reverse it. So, <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> was it worth it and then we work it i put my thing down flip it and we burst it you don't listen Never to words heard of that before. you don't nope I... yeah you have heard my neck my back my pussy and my crack you have totally heard that song before i've definitely not. <laughs> you've never heard my me- my neck my back my pussy my crack no, no. holden where what? are you I listen to House <laughs> and Techno. That's what I listen to. But the great. song is such a joke, and it plays everywhere. And it has and for I'm decades. <laughs> for a hundred years. Uh, years. I just said years. Anyway, yes. uh, yeah, I beat it. I, the very final boss, I literally beat all my characters were dead, but one, it was just Hawkeye. And Hawkeye was down to like a sliver of a pixel of health left, and I beat him. And I'm like, this was the easy difficulty. This That's impossible. You can't have the sliver of a pixel. You can't have a sliver of a pixel, especially impo- on a low res it's, it's screen. Physically impossible. No, you I had the sliver pixel. of a. Nope, I had the sliver of a pixel, but the pixel could only display the whole pixel. But I knew that I really had only a sliver of it. So it was displaying a full pixel. So you at least had a full pixel. I. S- it was uh, displaying okay. a full pixel, but I had a sliver of a pixel of hell <laughs> because that it makes was only a seven twenty p screen. We also played Doom. <laughs> <laughs> we did play doomed we were oh so marvel ultimate alliance 3 i'm the more it was too long it's a too long of a game too hard of a game long story short also played doom i played that for about an hour and a half until my eyeball said you cannot do this anymore my eyes hurt so bad <laughs> for anyone who doesn't know i'm going to china it was supposed to be the end of this month but now it's going to be in october for work but i had to get a bunch of vaccinations for china one you of which was sick. typhoid and I had to take the typhoid vaccine, which is a live virus. I had to take four pills over the course of a week. So as soon as your body is finally like, all right, getting over the first one. No, nope, here's more of it. All right, getting over the- So I was dead. Dead, dead, dead. Had to call off work for like three days. Fun, fun, fun. Fen Fen. Isn't that a banned substance? It's not a house band, so I don't know. No, Fen Fen. They don't even have house Fen Fen is, like a house an, is like something that has not aspartame in it. What's that? <laughs> it's not mesothelioma. <laughs> what is? What is a like a diet pill? Ephedrine. Ephedrine. Ephedrine is a, is a thing. Yes. Um, I know that's a thing. That's I recognize. The, that's I the diet. The the drug that's in a lot of diet pills that got banned, right? Ephedrine. Sure. Absolutely. This is the ephedrine podcast. After ephedrine. all, ephedrine is a medication and stimulant. That sounds right. Anyway. Um, Fen Fen also is one of those pills. <laughs> I played Doom. Holden, what'd you play? <laughs> I played Doom as well. 
I won't talk too much about it, though, because we'll talk about that because it's our barf game. Don't want to spoil our thoughts on that yet. Oh, hey, uh, what are we playing on Tuesday, tomorrow, or to, today, if you're listening oh, to this? Oh, shoot. We need to figure that out. Hmm. We need to figure that out. We'll reconvene after the pod, after we record, and we'll figure that out. We'll tweet All something right, out. I'm going to leave you responsible for communicating that to our patrons. Okay. To our patronus um, charms. I'm trying to think to do a poll probably. All right. Anyway, so yeah, I played Doom. Oh, it's just kind of fun to play Doom and Doom don't, 3 back Don't turn to back. it into a poll. We already solicit our audience too much. If we give them so, yet another poll, because I'm about to put out a poll on Patreon to ask what next month's game is going to be. And if they vote in all these polls, we're going to get tired of polls and no one's going to vote for anything. We just need to be assertive and tell them, listen, bitches, you are going to play this, this game this week. This is not a democracy. This, this is an authoritarian effort. <laughs> yes, this is what Donald Trump wants us to be. <laughs> so i played doom 3 in conjunction with doom which is kind of cool to see how much different they are there's a lot of similarities in terms of like health works largely the same way uh but it's just when cool you, to see how mechanically different they are when you say in conjunction with doom do you mean that like you load up doom 3 on your switch and then you turn on doom on your ps4 and then you're watching. I go back. The, you're watching the PS4, but you're using your Pro Controller. I've I've literally been going back to back. So I'll like I'll play level of Doom. I'll play level of Doom three. I'll go back and forth. It's not nearly as exciting as what I thought. <laughs> I'm playing Doom with my toes, using the Doom wrong controller for the wrong game, and then not making any progress in either. Yeah, I have made no progress, but it's great. It's great so far. Uh, really, really enjoying the story of Doom Three, which is not something I expected because, like Doom One, Doom Doom One, Doom Twenty Sixteen story is bash demons in and shoot them in the face. Mm -hmm. Like that's the shoot really the that's face! the story. There's more to it than that, but like that's why you keep playing that game. Doom Three, though, I'm like, I want to know what happens. I want to know. Does Dwayne like... the Rock Johnson pop out somewhere? <laughs> <laughs> um, I do want to know. More about, and I should have looked this up about what the Dustin Eucalyptus uh, Hill mentioned about um, the Doom, de Doom the movie. Shut up! Shut the up! DVD shut up! Shut up! Shut up! You're spoiling right. our future content of the show. All right, fine. Well, don't worry, Eucalyptus. We'll get there soon. His name is Dustin E. Claire Hill. <laughs> e. Claire Hill. <laughs> I also on my Switch. I played Mario Kart some more because I just really love Mario Kart. Thought I'd get back in some online for that game. And, man, I was really sucking really badly. I took a few, uh, like, video captures of me being in, like, second place right before the finish line and then getting hit by every item known to man in that game and ending the race in last place, which is the most infuriating thing in that game. But that's Mario Kart. That's how it works. I want to let you know. I didn't listen to most of what you just said because you said you were sucking really badly at that game. And badly, and is went... an, badly is an adverb, which means that you were doing the I was verb sucking of really sucking bad. badly, bad, uh, which means that you were actually good at it. Okay, moving on. Breath of the Wild. <laughs> I also played Breath of the Wild. No one that listened to that was confused by that. Only grammar Nazis were. <laughs> You're not allowed to say Nazis. It's 2019. They're white supremacists. <laughs> so... Breath, that's right. You don't have to be a grammar white supremacist about it. <laughs> <laughs> a gra it's, we're actually a grammar supremacist. There we go. Grammar supremacist. There we go. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so Breath of the Wild. Uh, I told Alex Cozina about this method of ooh, playing ooh, it. Shout out to Aiko. You should change your name to Acorn, Alex. <laughs> <laughs> Alex, don't listen to him. Your name is great. And if you change it to anything, it should be Cozy Bear. Change it to Acorn. Is it Akon. There's a rapper named Akon. You guys can be Akon and Acorn. <laughs> <laughs> it is the Dark Souls method of playing Breath of the Wild, which is you basically <laughs> Jedi roll the eyes. <laughs> you can only save at any sort of like cooking station where you're lighting a fire or a shrine, and that's it. So if you die, you have to revert your manual save back to that location again. And it really does make exploring the overworld really intense because you're like, man, I've traveled far. I haven't seen a shrine. I haven't seen anywhere to cook food. If I die, I'm going all the way back to the other side of Hyrule Field, and I'm screwed. It makes it a lot of fun. It's quite enjoyable to play that way. I'm so happy you find really... joy in that. And then also I'm not using a map at all. 
So I'm just looking at the lay of the land and trying to figure out where to go from just looking around. Do you we remember when that to used to be like a pack in bonus for games, like as a pre order or like part of the strategy guide where like they would include a fold out map and you would actually look at the map <laughs> while you played? I never used them though. Because like you never used to watch general. TV as a kid. I didn't. No. I was a weird kid. You were a bearded kid? Oh my I was god. A bearded child. Speaking of bearded kids, Borderlands 2 has sold 22 million units to date. Why did I say bearded kids? Because Salvador, the gunzerker, is the size of a child because he's very small in the game and he has a beard. Boom. Also, Boom. <laughs> <laughs> Alta, Balto, Alto, Age of Ultron, Uncle Cracker. Um, in the Tiny Tina DLC, all of the pirates look like Salvador, or all of one of the characters look like Salvador. And somebody's like, you can't do that. That's racist. And then Tiny Tina goes, it's not racist if he says it's okay. Salvador, it's okay if all the pirates look like you. And he goes, yeah. See, it's not racist. I love that game so much. Anyway, sold 22 I'm million units like to date. Five of those units were me. And if that happens to everybody, <laughs> then this game's really only sold to 4 million people. <laughs> uh, Grand Theft Auto, this is also our quest log, by the way, everybody. Fetch quest. Fetch quest, but it's part of our quest log. Grand Theft Auto was behind 28% of Take-Two's Q1 net revenue. That's not surprising. That's so impressive, though. DLC. That that it's game very impressive. came out literally like six or seven years ago, and it still makes up a over a quarter of their revenue every every quarter. Yeah. So Grand Theft Auto Online, so pops. Fucking A, man. Uh, Reddit Redemption 2 sales, uh, num- so sales numbers top 25 million units. Damn, that's really good, too. You remember that game? You remember that game? <laughs> I, I need to get back to that game so badly. How, how much hit- you in a bet 24 million of those 25 were back in November? I feel like everybody bought that game at launch, and then no one said a word about it for the rest of time. <laughs> well, also, the online has not been nearly as popular as Grand Theft Auto Online has yeah. been. I think that's a big factor in it, too. We'll see what happens in Cross Gen. They re released it for PlayStation 5 and Xbox 2, that everyone buys 24 million copies of it again. We'll see. <laughs> um, Indie Hit Journey is now available on iOS. That was really surprising to me. Ubisoft that was kind of surprising C- me too. I guess you know Sky just came out a couple weeks ago though. Yeah, from that game. Company. But Sky is so similar. It's just a. It's like a brighter version of Journey. Ubisoft CEO teases upcoming Splinter Cell entry. Wants to choose right moment to quote come back big, aka next gen. Don't expect it current gen. To me, that's what that means at least. They're just like they're dragging that franchise through the dirt, and they're building up everyone's expectations, and then just like purposefully shitting on them. Watch it be announced at Gamescom? Then? I don't know. But no. I, I, I doubt Ubisoft it. I really is, feel like... Ubisoft is like, hey, what's up, Walmart Canada? Here's some box art. Slip that on E3 2017. And Walmart Canada's <laughs> like, we got you, fam. And then they're like, just kidding. We ain't going to announce shit, you guys. And then the next year, you're like, y'all like Splinter Cell? Y'all like putting goggles on a character in a mobile game? There you go, bitches. And that's it. <laughs> this and next one surprised like, me. Eh, coming. Days Gone Sales, second best-selling game of 2019 in the UK. Dude, this game is continuing to sell. This game is doing really well on charts all over the world, actually. In fact, even yeah. on NPD, I think it's still charting in the top 10. Mm-hmm. It's doing well, which I, I don't get because it feels like that kind of... It didn't flop. People liked the game, but it didn't really have a big impact. In the same way that like Horizon Zero Dawn, people were talking about that. God of War, people were talking about that. Spider-Man, people were definitely talking about that game. Yeah. So yeah, I was very surprised by that. Way to go, Days Gone. You did it. Yes. Yeah, speaking of games that flopped at the beginning but have Woo! come back. Third party no quest log. Sky Beyond. Uh, so IGN has like a rundown, a lot of actually outlets had a rundown of all the new stuff in the No Man's Sky Beyond update. And it's a lot. And I actually wanted to run this through to see if any of it interested you, Chad. I have I will call out a few things as you go. Yeah, I think, well, the first one's off the bat. I think the one that would appeal to you the most. No Man's Sky VR. They detailed some more of what that is. If it's free, um, that's how I'll play it. It's not going to be... Oh, you mean like a PS Plus thing? Or no money. <laughs> it, it won't be free to play, I don't think. So it's going to be available PS, VR, Oculus, Vive, and Index. It works with both regular kind of, you know, uh, regular controllers as well as motion or the touch controllers from Oculus um, Rift. 
Also notable, they say there's additional enhancements for PS4 Pro. So if you have a Pro version, things will look a little bit better. It's going to have teleporting and walking support. Joe Screbbles describes the motion controls as remarkably intuitive. He asked uh, uh, Sean Murray, like, I just feel like I want to punch that tree to get the carbon out of it. And he's like, go for it. Try it. And he was just punching the tree to get the carbon out of the tree, which is kind of cool sounding. Yeah. Can I tell you... uh... The sentence you wrote here, rather than mining with the traditional phase beam, you can literally punch rocks. Yep. You took something that already wasn't fun, but was efficient and made it less efficient, way less efficient. Where like, oh my God, I can (laughs) shoot that from afar and gain minerals like crazy, or I can walk all the way up to it and punch a small section of it. No, but you can teleport up to it. You can just teleport and boom, you're there and you're punching it. It's like when you go to Mass Effect 2 and you have to do the missions where you go and put the probe on the planets and get the shit. (laughs) That was awful. Remember when you could do this from up above and scan via a satellite? Well, now you can also go down and dig by hand every square foot of this thing. (laughs) I want to quote a notable thinker here. And this notable thinker's name is Chad Michael Ennis. And he mm-hmm. said once, everything is better in VR. Oh, it is. And I think this is going to be one of those things. I did not say that it's not going to be more fun to punch things, but it's yeah. going to be hella inefficient. Oh, there's no way that's going to be the preferred way of doing it. But you're going to be like, man, I want to punch that tree because I love punching trees in real life because video games make me violent. punch my dinosaur. Let's do it. Let's do it this as well. We'll get to some dinosaur stuff in a second. There's some cool stuff there. there are no Man's no Sky Online. There. Well, they you are can aliens. find some you can find some aliens that look like dinosaurs. Right. I've definitely come across some myself. No Man's Sky Online is going to have up to 32 players. Really just means on PC it will have that many. It'll be 16 on PS4. And they're going to have an area called The Nexus, which is a space station slash online hub where you'll be able to meet up with friends that you're on your PlayStation network or just random people. And then there's going to be at that um, space station... New shops, new missions, and even new story elements to kind of explore with. That's kind of cool. You also, like, go on multiplayer missions off with your friends from there. And you'll also be able to run into random people that are on the same planet as you. Question number two. Yes. Wasn't that already a feature of the original game, but there were so many planets that the odds of doing it were literally, like, one in a trillion and no one ever saw each other anyway? Yeah, so I think they're, they've are they revamped it a lot more, so it's more seamless. Is it fewer kind of planets? Idea. No, 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 no. Just like if you go to a planet, they'll be like, hey, we recognize that some players are already on that planet, so we'll go ahead and put them together. That's how they are doing it differently than last time. But the odds of actually being on the same planet, are they still infinitesimal? No, I think you're missing the point. So, like, let's say that we're not friends. We're two random people. Yeah. I go to planet ZR-27. Yep. And you also go to planet ZR-27. But stop right there. That's yeah. almost next to impossible to happen in the first place. We'll see. <laughs> we'll see. Um, see? No Man's there, Sky... It just goes to show, you'll never escape the initial news that comes out about your game. <laughs> That's how I will, will forever, no matter how many updates and fixes no, I do, I will forever I, see I, No Man's at, Sky At this that point, way. I don't know anybody who, at least who's played the game, who says it's the same game it was when it came out. It has definitely surpassed its lackluster beginnings. All right, tell me more about 2.0. This is actually the part I'm most excited about, to be honest. So No Man's Sky 2.0, it's basically calling, they're calling it 2.0 because there's so many small updates that it, it it's just it's very significant. So there's a new galactic map. There are new alien races, which, cool about the alien races is they're actually walking around now. They're not just stationary standing behind a counter or sitting in a chair. You can actually even now sit in a chair next to them and talk to them, and there's a whole new language system as well. That's really cool. You can also ride animals, so you can ride dinosaurs, and you can also milk dinosaurs if possible with that species. Again, they're not dinosaurs. They may share similar DNA. But I'm just saying, dinosaurs. if you find a dinosaur that has nipples, you can milk it because anything with nipples you can milk. But it's not a dinosaur. <laughs> Even if it's Robert De Niro, you can milk it. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I, I'm actually really excited about this. It comes out on August 14th, so that's on Wednesday. I'm upset only for one thing, though, is that it doesn't have cross-play. So my brother has an Xbox now, and he's like, he was texting me like, oh my god, we can play No Man's Sky together. It's going to be so great. And I had to explain to him that Sony's a piece of shit and doesn't, doesn't allow cross-play. <laughs> <laughs> and it was devastating. So is, maybe one day in the future. Is the VR Oculus Quest compatible? It is not. Boo. 
Only Oculus Rift. Boo, you whore. Well, I'm glad your nerd thing got a stupid update. It's, <laughs> I haven't played it in a while, but I'm going to check this out for sure. I'm just kidding. I'm sure the game's great. You just got to play a character sometimes and make yourself laugh. <laughs> Speaking of making yourself laugh, that's what Annapurna Interactive is saying about bankruptcy claims. <laughs> They're saying, we're not going anywhere after concerns of imminent, imminent bankruptcy. Coming from Elise Favis, like Davis, but with a f- Game Informer employee. <laughs> uh, they've published What Remains of Edith Funch, Outer Wilds, and Florence are some notable games that you should know and should definitely play. Annapurna Interactive is not the one facing bankruptcy, however. It's their parent company, Annapurna Pictures, who are the people behind her, Zero Dark Thirty, Sorry to Bother You, and Booksmart. Go see Booksmart. Booksmart's fucking wonderful. Save Mommy and Daddy Interactive from bankruptcy. Oh, that Booksmart, the movie you've been raving about, that's right. Booksmart. <laughs> I said it <laughs> a hundred times. No, I was like, what's Booksmart? I, I kept thinking for some reason of, um, what was that? Really mediocre Jason Bateman comedy about spelling bees. Bad words. I don't know why bad I jumped words. to that for a second. You're I'm right. like, they made bad words? And then I'm like, no, movie that Chad's told me to see that I haven't got the chance to see yet. Yep. Because, again, you're a racist. <laughs> <laughs> I, I prefer grammar supremacist, actually. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's it for a third party quest log. Next up is Jugal. Jugal those buns. Jugal. <laughs> Where did Jugal come from? I think that's how Jesse says it. Okay. Jugal. I the, the thir- I laughed so hard because I did not expect to say it when I started reading the headline, but my mouth <laughs> said it. I meant to say Google says next Stadia Connect will be quote all about the games. I'm all about the he said she said bullshit. Um, Eric Van Allen says this from US Gamer their connect that's coming next week it's going to be about games 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 even though they also said in my voice and my words not theirs we got a lot of other shit we should be telling you about too but we're not gonna yeah honestly at this point I'm like what what games are they going to mention that I'm actually going to care about like what game are they going to mention that I can't play anywhere else I don't care Outer I just Worlds. don't care Two. <laughs> it, it, like seriously, if they had exclusive games, they would have mentioned it already, and they haven't. So this is basically just going to be a bunch of third-party games that you can get everywhere else. And if you care about that game, you probably already have it. If you don't have it, it's more likely to be on sale at like a flash sale or whatever the equivalent on Xbox is at some point in the near future. Then. As opposed to like Stadia, where it'll probably be full price to stream it, which you don't yeah. want to do. But and then just you like, can't. Th- then you can't click on a YouTube streamer's button and then automatically play it. Great point. I'm yep. convinced. Yep. I can't wait to be sold on Google Stadia. Oh, like I, I really, yeah, I, I, I really want to like yeah. it. I but right now I'm just so skeptical. So skep. I, th- I mean, my dog skep. When we, <laughs> when this was first announced, we called it. We, or let's just say we we equated it to the iPhone announcement. Yep. And and now I'm like, yeah, I don't give a shit anymore. No one said that before the iPhone came out. <laughs> it was like, <laughs> no one was like, oh, I saw it in January, and it was amazing. It blew my mind. And now that it's June 20, 2007, and I'm like, uh, I don't care anymore. It doesn't seem worth it. How did they How did they fuck up the messaging that badly? I've never seen this before, little, and I just don't care. Jiggle. Little baby I'll jiggle. watch it. I'll watch it just so that. I know what they said, but I'm not looking forward to it. Oh, I'm going to watch the Connect. I'm going to watch that Stadia Connect so hard. Ah! <laughs> I'm more excited to see what Microsoft has to offer. I guess because I want to be excited for streaming, and I'm just not anymore. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Next up, we got a Nintendo Quest Log for sex. First story is a new team and new rivals in Pokemon Sword and Pokemon Shield coming from YouTube and uh, not Nintendo. Yeah, I guess it was Nintendo's channel, wasn't it? I don't know. It was the Pokemon Something, Company channel. Pokemon Company, whatever the fuck. Yeah. Uh, introduced to a few things. One, there are Galarian forms, similar to Alolan forms of existing Pokemon. I like, liked these. I thought they were... I liked these more than the Alolan forms. I felt like they were more yep. interesting. Alolans, most of the time, were just like maybe a palette swap and like a type yep. change. 
Um, as soon as I saw Galarian wheezing and he had like smoke stab top hats, that was yeah. pretty awesome. Yeah. A lot of people are freaking out over Zigzagoon, Linoon, and its new evolution, Obstagoon, because it is a complete ripoff of Gene Simmons. Uh, Gene Simmons is the kiss uh, front man with the long tongue. When I first read the headline, I saw Richard Simmons, which is the, I'm a pony, I'm a pony, the fitness guy, <laughs> who was also in The Nutty Professor. <laughs> which honestly could be like an evolution of maybe like mime, like he learns how to speak and that's maybe, what he starts saying. Maybe. <laughs> There was also a new Pokemon showing off, Morpico, who might be my favorite Pokemon of the game so far. Yep, absolutely. Same it's here. a little gerbil, and he has two modes. He has two, uh, not, do they call them modes? They, they, yeah, they call them modes, yeah. There are modes. There's full belly mode, and he's happy. And then they legit call it hangry mode. I love that hangry yep. has made its way into our dictionary that is now officially part of Pokemon. There's hangry mode. And he also he changed his really type, angry. which I forgot to write down his types. But when he's hangry, he turns into like a dark type of Pokemon, yeah. which I thought was kind of awesome. And the new rivals. I don't like know about the individual rivals they mentioned, which is, is that Bead, Beady? What is that? Uh, Dee Dee Pickles. <laughs> Pickles. <laughs> Sorry, she's on I the brain for half of idiots. Marine. Um. If, cool. you, uh, but then, if you guys aren't familiar, we have another podcast called Affable Idiots, where this week we cast... A lot of thing, a lot of movies about cartoons, which include Rugrats, Dee Dee Pickles. If you want to listen to me be really confused and not know what I'm talking about, <laughs> you should listen to it. If you want to learn more about <laughs> Holden's sexual obsession with Ashley Tisdale. <laughs> and then um, Team Yell, which I I really like the idea of Team Yell. Basically, they're these Euro, Euro punk rockers. It's like the new Team Rocket. And I yep. just think that sounds awesome. I just hope everything they say is in all caps. And it's not just like yelling it loudly, but screaming it and shouting it. <laughs> and then this wasn't included in that trailer, but there's also from Nintendo Life here, Pokemon Sword and Shield introduces Poke Jobs, a new way to uh, net rate items. I like rare items. net rate. I wrote rate, but it's rare. Um, I wrote rate, but it's rare. So, I think that it's basically a, the equivalent to the, the daycare. You send your Pokemon to a job, they level up, and you get items. I think what's more equivalent to is the Brotherhood system in Assassin's Creed Brotherhood, or uh, from Metal Gear Solid Peace Walker, Metal Gear Solid Five, the building of Mother Base and sending your troops mm -hmm. out, and they return with things. Uh, yeah, that's outside of Pokemon, that's it's more like yeah, but it's an evolution of the daycare system is what I'm getting at. Oh, uh, kinda. What do you mean, kind uh, of? You send your Pokemon to the daycare, so they level up when you're not Yeah, but the them. daycare is like you have to go to a specific spot on the world map, put them in the daycare, and then you have to And it's them. evolved, so you can do that from the PC now. You can? Oh. Yeah, know. you can do it from the PC. Yeah. Anyway, it's more like the other systems, which is what I'm excited about, because that was actually one of the things that hooked me most about uh, Peace Walker, and that I loved most about Metal Gear Solid Five, and uh, that I really enjoyed about Brotherhood, so... I'm into it. Into it to win to it. It's addicting. Yeah. Oh, This is definitely, yeah. of the Pokemon announcements uh, for Sword and Shield, this is, these sets are ones that I'm excited about. Uh, I still don't give a shit about Dynamaxing and Gigantamaxing and whatever the fuck they're going to call the next thing. Um, I wonder, but... So those are the, like, regular flow and heavy flow. What's the light flow version called? <laughs> I don't know. I need the Gigantamaxi pads, please. <laughs> <laughs> It's, it's a just, heavy flow month. It's just dynamiting? I don't know. Dynamiting. No, max is the part. Maxi. But if it's maxi smaller. Dynamax. It's smaller. Gigantamax. We, we need the maxi. That's what leads to the pad and the flow joke. Oh, okay. Maybe minimaxing. I think. Or skinamaxing. Skinamaxing. They'll allow that in a Pokemon game mm -hmm. for sure. Yeah, so I'm still pumped to play this game. I'll definitely start it, probably not finish it, but I'm excited for it. Yeah. Chad, you had some things to say about our main quest. Do you want to bring us to the main quest? Excuse me. Um, I don't quite understand how what you were intending to do and how... I, I know that I have some things to talk about in the, the I, topic of news and, and killing people because of video games. I really just wanted to just briefly dismiss the idea that video games are responsible for the shootings that just happened. Gotcha. Okay. So, and I just really wanted to dismiss it and say it's stupid. It is stupid. That's stupid. All I and wanted I to say about it 
So we were going to make this our main quest and then just be like, haha, surprise, it's not our main quest because it shouldn't be a topic of conversation to begin with. Yep. Exactly. Um, and for. we're going to continue that, but in the spirit of also saying, uh, I'm really disappointed in the media because I think the media has turned it into something that it shouldn't be. Because mm. specifically talking about Walmart and the violent game, pulling down the violent game ads and things like that. Which is, is not that real. It's, it's well, they, them pulling down the violent game displays and advertisements is real Mm -hmm. but it nowhere did walmart say we're pulling down video game stuff they said we're pulling down violent ads and content in our stores across movies hunting sporting goods and video games yet forbes and variety and ign and all these places all specifically said walmart's pulling down video game displays they Mm -hmm. made the conversation about video games walmart did not they did and I think that was incredibly irresponsible, and it goes against everything we've been fighting for for decades to build up video games and their reputation as legit pieces of art and uh, things that don't poison kids. And it's stupid. And I think that's dumb, and we're moving on from it. Yep. Chad? Woo! What's our Ryan subscriber interrogatives? We are blowing through this episode this week. We are. Like, like pretend, hey, pretend your ears are this episode. Actually, That sounded like Breath of the Wild. <laughs> That's Breath of the Wild. Um, yeah, we have a Ryan subscriber interrogative. This comes from Dusty Hill. Dust Entropy Hill. I didn't remember. What, what do they call him? It doesn't matter. He's Entropy now. Dusty Entropy <laughs> Hill. Uh, true story. In Guild Wars, one of my favorite classes to play as was the Mesmer. And two of the coolest skills were entropy and empathy. Empathy was you could curse somebody, and when they hit you, they also took damage. And it was really cool. Um, Anyway, Dust Entropy Hill has interacted with us in a new way. Because if you remember from last episode, you are now allowed to shout into voice memos whatever you want, whether it's related to anything we said or not. And send it to respawnamefire at gmail.com. And that's precisely what he did. Let's listen to it. If I thought about this enough ahead of time, I might have figured out a way to work this like organically live into the stream. So I'm just <laughs> going to play it from my phone into the microphone. I hope that works. We got one from Trevor Patatis as well. Oh, this is, okay, it's recording. Hi, this is Dustin. Dust E. Hill, Dustin Eucalyptus Hill, email Hill, wherever you go. Um, I don't really <laughs> yell, but y'all... Um, forgot to mention or neglected to mention or was unaware of the fact that Doom 3 um, had a playable demo on the 2004 movie starring Dwayne The Rock Johnson um, on the DVD release. You could plug in that DVD plug in, you know, insert that DVD into your Xbox original system and play the first level of Doom 3, um, which as a teenager scared the shit out of me and my cousins, but we still did it anyways. So... Yeah. Fucking nailed it. You fucking nailed it, Dustin. We did not I at least I did not know about that. Um I remember them being timed to release in similar time. I don't remember that one had the demo. Um I thought it was like a year difference. Like it was two thousand four for Doom Three, then two thousand five for the movie. You know, I wanna say that's true. But let's find out together. But that would have to be backwards then if the demo was on the DVD. The demo for the game. Unless it was just like, a, hey, this game's been out for a year, but nobody bought it, so please play the demo so you fucking buy it. <laughs> I'll look up the movie. You look up the game. I was already looking up the game. Uh, August 3rd, 2004 is when it came out. On uh, PC. October 20th, 2005 is when the movie came out. Ooh. So that means the DVD probably came out in 2005. No, the DVD probably came out in 2006. 2006, so that's what I meant to say. And I said five because yeah. I'm an idiot. As, yeah, I, I remember them being related next year. because I remember, I think there was actually, uh, I remember playing Doom and then also being interested in the movie because I had been playing the game Doom, which is exactly how those companies wanted it to work. Oh, you like the movie? You'll love the game. Or, oh, you like the game? Well, look at this movie that happened to be timed perfectly for it. <laughs> Notice you didn't say you'll like the movie as well. <laughs> <laughs> um, don't remember what I was going to say now. Thank you, Holden. Oh, I was going to ask, have you come across Pinky yet? In Doom 3. I 
th- I think so. Are those the really big fat guys that shoot like they have two guns attached to each hand? No. No? Okay, I don't know. Yeah, it's it's like a legit character in the story of the game that you'll come across that is then transformed into a thing. Oh. Oh, um, is the bad guy just I think the bad guy just turned somebody yeah. into a monster. Whatever. Whatever. Maybe that was Pinky. Uh you said we have something from Trevor Bettis, Trevor Patatis, yeah. Dungeon it's Driver. It's Patata to assistance. Uh Dungeon Trevor Potatoes. Go listen to Difficulty Class and then write into difficultyclass at gmail.com with any D D related questions and then go follow twitch.tv slash Gary Widow. <laughs> Touche, Trevor. Touche. <laughs> I hadn't thought that people would use it as that, but very good. You got yep. me. You surprised yep. me. <laughs> I also called it Dungeon Driver. It hasn't been called Dungeon Driver for months, my fucking idiot head. Oh, you're such an idiot. It's difficult to class because he doesn't always do it in a car anymore. <laughs> the other day he texted me and he's like, so it's Sunday. I'm watching Harry Potter in review with my wife. Because or I'm watching Harry Potter and the Sorcerer's Stone with my wife because kind of funny is doing Harry Potter in review, and that got me thinking. What microphones do you guys use to record? I was like, huh, nice, good trail of thought there. Trail yeah. of thought, stream of consciousness, stream of eucalyptus. That's a thermometer you just held up to your head. It is. It's a thermometer. No a thermometer. I am a thermometer. I eat tomatoes. <laughs> ang, ang, ang. Uh, that's, that's all we got. Oh, no, we got Game of Game Show. <laughs> <laughs> killing it. We're killing Kill it. Kill him! <laughs> all right, everyone. We're moving on to our last segment called Game on Game Show. We, 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 wait. <laughs> <laughs> what are you laughing at? No, that's right. I thought we were going to talk about Barf. Well, since I stopped it anyway, let's talk about Barf first. Barf, we're playing <laughs> Doom 2016. Uh... <laughs> Right now, but if you're a Patreon supporter, go to patreon.com slash respawn aim fire and vote for what we're doing in September. That poll will be out before this episode goes live. So you have, uh, what, a week and a half? We'll do till Sunday, the whatever. Mm-hmm. And <laughs> that's a very specific date for you guys to get it in by. <laughs> but this one's a me month. September's a me month. So you'll have a bunch of games that are different than what Holden put up to vote from. Let's get it on sexually. Apex Legends. I think that's what we should do for game night. Apex Legends for game night? Yeah. It's 3v3. Yeah. So may, what if we do... Let's do it. And if it's just us and Alex, uh, like it is some weeks, then we'll do a team. If it's us and multiple people, maybe we'll do a team Holden and team Chad, and we'll split up. And then team Chad will definitely win, because that's still... <laughs> okay. I played one game of Apex Legends, came in second place, and never played again. Just like mic drop, I'm done. Yep. <laughs> All right. I've played many times and have yet to come that close. Oh, wait. One time I did come that close, but I tried to hide in a corner um, to make it the rest of the way because <laughs> <laughs> I was scared to fight the people who made it to the end. <laughs> nice. Nice. Now we are actually going to play Game On Game Show, the game show on our gaming show called Game On, a game show like games, a game, 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 game. We've got a returning champion game called... Now flesh it out, now flesh it out, now flesh it out, where we take two games, mash them together, and flesh out whatever that game might end up looking like. Let's We've do got it. five pairs this weekend. Bears beats Battlestar Galactica. Michael! <laughs> <laughs> oh, shit, I remember I, I live with someone named Michael. He might think I'm calling him. Um, <laughs> the door opens, I guess. <laughs> You'd be like, yes, Michael, what can I do for you? Because <laughs> your name is also Michael. That's exactly right. Um, so we have Michael Scott exactly right no that's uh, Scott Michaels exactly right Scott Michaels right whatever whatever, Chad Scott Michaels Michael was in there that's why I said it All right, here we go here's the backstory into an inside joke of an inside joke of an inside joke that I didn't even remember the beginning of but Jesse and I have reappropriated Um, Scott Michaels exactly right there's a choreographer in the musical theater scene in the Chicagoland area named Scott Michaels and uh He was working with a cast that did not include myself, but included a friend of mine. And apparently this person, I've never met this person before, Scott Michaels. I've never met him. But apparently he's famous for saying, all right, guys, so this next eight count, you're going to do this, 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 and then cross over here and do that. And then somebody like, 
wait, do we cross left over right or right over left? And he's like, yes. So we cross right over left? That's exactly right. Wait a minute, I thought you said left over right. That's exactly right. <laughs> so if anything is like super confusing, right off the bat, it's like, that is Scott Michaels. Exactly right. That's what my <laughs> friend, who was actually in the cast, started. And then I just took that phrase and ran with it. And um, and speaking with our our elderly friend that used to come to the store all the time where we worked, um, I realized in a training session one day how many times I said, that's exactly right. That's exactly And in my head, ever since, I was like, <laughs> fuck, I'm saying Scott Michaels exactly right every single time. And now Jesse and I just say it all the time. Great. Glad we went on that tangent. Here's our first pair of games for Now Flesh It Out. We've got Galaga crossed with Super Mario Bro- New Super Mario Bros. U Deluxe. <laughs> Why specifically New Super Mario Bros. I don't know. Because okay. I was going to write Super Mario Bros. And I was like, no, we're going to go stupid with it. This actually sounds like a really challenging version of Mario. We're like, all right, so in Super Mario Bros. 3, there was mm-hmm. a level where the sun is chasing after you the whole time. Yep. It's I'm glad like you that, finally experienced the- that level great level there's in this game it's galaga all the galagas like ships and stuff all the galagas all the galagas every galagas are are coming down you know they do like the swipe back and forth it's just that every single level you got to avoid them all the time oh shit so it's a regular ass mario level but then there's just shit flying through the that sounds yeah. like a mario maker level that somebody should have already made well they can't do that but. Well, they won't have Galaga ships, but they have some kind of, I'm sure, flying turtle or Goomba that can do Oh, yeah, that are constantly flying. Uh, I don't know how easy that would be to implement, actually. Okay. A lot of that, it but, doesn't matter still. how easy it is. People will find a way to do it. This is true. This there is was true. a person who made a first-person dungeon crawler in Mario Maker 2. Really? Yeah. Have you not seen that? No, it's I It's actually really impressive. cool. You should take a look at it. Look it up. Yeah, but what, that's not Galaga Mario, though. Let's You're right. That. Here's the other thing that I was thinking. Yeah. Um, shoot. Shoot. What's the game? It was on Super Nintendo. You're riding on Yoshi's back, shooting, and it came with the peripheral, the, the bazooka peripheral. The I knew what you were talking about until, until that. I, I, I was going to say Yoshi's Island, but that's not No, Yoshi's no, no, Island. no, no. Um, what game is it? The Super Scope game. Diddy's Conquest. Super Mario World. Legend of Zelda Link to the Past. Super Metroid. I'm just naming Super Nintendo games that I'm aware of. Oh Super my god. Ghouls and Ghosts. SNES Final Super Fantasy Scope. 3. Final Fantasy 4. Final Fantasy 5. Final Fantasy 6. You don't remember Chrono this? Chrono Trigger. No. No? I mean, Smash Bros. is an item you can get, isn't it? Yeah, the Super Scope. It's an item you can get in Smash Bros. and shoot people with it. I didn't know that was a real thing. Very cool. Yeah, it was a bazooka. But, um, so you have to control Mario while you're shooting the Galaga guys out of the way with that? Yeah, that sounds like that. really hard. I mean, fuck, fuck, I'm done with the mashup. I just really want to find out what the, what the game is now. So <laughs> fuck we were talking about. This is more important. I can't believe you've never heard of this game. I've never heard of this game before. What is it? Tell me. Find it sooner. Find it fast. Find it right now. Why is right it now, so right now. hard to look for? Probably because you're crazy. It doesn't Yoshi exist. Safari. Is that it? Basically, Safari? the original Link's crossbow training, but for Yoshi instead. <laughs> Basically, yeah. yeah. Yoshi Safari. Yes! This is totally it. So this is a boss battle at the end of one of the levels, but you're on <laughs> Yoshi's back, <laughs> and it's a light gun game, and you're just going through these levels, and it's a first-person shooter, and you're going down. Yeah, it's it's super fun. Wow. Oh, I want to play what that What will now. they think of next? Look at Yoshi's drunk-ass face in that. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I can't believe... Oh, this brings back so many memories. Yoshi's Safari. Oh, god damn. This is my jam. Party till the AM. All right, number two. Prince of Persia, Sands of Time. Crossed with Ninja Turtles, Turtles in Time. Wait, one more time? The Prince of Persia, Sands of Time. I haven't played it. But you know that with the Prince of Persia games, the, are. the rewind mechanic, yeah, the rewind mechanic, the the uh, button press at the right time mechanic. What is that called? It was really popular. Quick, out of quick war. time, quick time. That's quick, it. Yeah, quick time. And then sense. Ninja Turtles, Turtles in Time. Haven't played it, that, but you know what it is. It's the Ninja Turtles, the beat 'em up style game, an arcade style game from way back when. 
So all I'm picturing is there's no rewind mechanic. It's still the same platforming as Prince of Persia. But if you die, mm-hmm. that's it. That turtle is dead. You only have four permadeath. turtles for the whole game. It's permadeath. <laughs> but the real turtles... <laughs> And the controllers, you just get turtles in the package, and you have to like raise them from being really tiny until they're big enough to act to physically be the size of a controller. <laughs> and then you take a USB cable and plug it into the turtle's butt. And then when the turtle dies in the game, it sends a shock through the cable and electrocutes the <laughs> turtle until it's dead. Despite like that being physically impossible to really do, oh my god! It would also be really funny to be like, "Hey, honey, I got you a really cool Christmas gift. I hope in like a few years you're able to start playing it with the turtles fully grown." <laughs> turtles adapt to the size of their environment. I learned this because I had turtles as a kid. So if you get them a big enough tank or no tank at all, they'll grow pretty big pretty quick. Interesting. But if you leave them in a small container, they'll be small the rest of their life. That sounds like a really funny idea for a stupid monster movie. Like, this turtle was left outside his whole life. (laughs) Massive. That's how Godzilla started. It makes no sense because most turtles are outside of the wild. But that doesn't matter for the purpose of this Hollywood blockbuster feature coming next summer called Turtle Town. (laughs) Turtle Town. Everyone, all the turtles got left outside and they just started living in people's homes, took over their cars. Now they're a whole society. That's it. <laughs> and at the end, it has a very serious global warming message. <laughs> Respect the environment, otherwise it will become Turtle Town yep. next summer. Turtle Town right. is the result of that mashup. Great, moving on <laughs> to number three. <laughs> Donkey Kong Country crossed with Devil May Cry. <laughs> Any, oh, I, My head went to daredevil and i'm like donkey kong is blind and he can't see any of the platforms <laughs> there are some um, levels in donkey kong like that though honestly i think it's just if this is very boring but like just take a devil may cry game and it's donkey kong just bashing demons heads in- instead like, that sounds great but would it be kremlins and penguins instead no it'd be just straight up demons demons like, did he- yeah, like Diddy Kong and, and uh, all them, two are there, and they're like, what the hell is up with all these demons? We're basically apes, so we're just going to like throw bananas at them and like bash their heads. And oh, they don't have guns. They have like the banana guns where like they squeeze out like a single banana and it goes flying out and they have to reload to get another banana. Well, Diddy Kong has peanut poppers. Okay, so then Diddy Kong can have peanut poppers, but Donkey Kong is going to have like basically a shotgun. Like one banana is going to do a lot of damage, but you get that one banana. We have to reload again. And if you remember, Lanky Kong has a trombone. He just plays music. He doesn't actually do anything. He just plays <laughs> tunes and puts them all to sleep. Yeah, although I think a Devil May Cry 2D platformer could be really cool. I'm actually surprised there hasn't been like a mobile 2D version of Devil May Cry or something like that. Like like Mirror's Edge, remember that? And they had the Mirror's Edge 2D yeah. game on iOS. Yeah. That was actually, I didn't think it was that bad. I yeah, did you it. buy Mirror's Edge Cataclysm? Yes. Have I played it? No. Exactly. <laughs> Which I was upset by, because I actually was looking forward to that game. I liked the first Mirror's Edge. It's good stuff. You know what I miss about... You know what I... Side note. Donkey Kong Country Tropical Freeze is a wonderful game. I concur, Doctor. Wonderful. Incredible level design. Phenomenal music. But I missed King K. Rule, and I missed the Kremlins. Like, I'm, I, the penguins didn't give a fuck. Fighting polar bears. I just want to point out, right? Chad. What? We've been over this whole history thing a few times now. There's only one Kremlin, and it's in <laughs> Russia. <laughs> so I don't know what you're talking about. I oh, had to. I had to. I just... Thanks for that lame dad joke, Holden. You're welcome. <laughs> yeah. Next <laughs> it was up, necessary. Mr. Shifty crossed with Luigi's Mansion. Hmm. If you're not have unfamiliar, you Mr. Shifty? no, I have not. But Mr. Shifty is basically Nightcrawler, the X Men, where you can jump between walls and teleport short distances. It was one of the original Switch launch games that everybody was all up its butt. That game was awesome. It was a lot of fun. Here's what it is: it is a Luigi's Mansion game where you play as one of the ghosts who can quickly shift in and out just to spook and scare Luigi, and that's the whole game. Oh, you just gotta it's find just different like, ways to scare him. Exactly. It's like a sandbox game where you just got to figure out how to scare Luigi. 
That sounds like Ooh, fun. I that totally actually, would play that. Uh, no, that sounds like a puzzle game. Not into it. <laughs> I, I was like, oh, that sounds good. I was like, no, there's going to be like elements where, oh, you can't scare him if this switch is turned on and this closet door is open because he can see a mirror behind that and you've been in the right. No, fuck that game. I'm thinking more like Goat Simulator, where it's just it's just Goat Simulator. You're just a goat. And it's like you're just Mr. Shifty scaring the shit out of Luigi. $60, buy it, bitch. <laughs> buy it, bitch. <laughs> All right, that was a mean thing to say. That was very Buy it, mean. person. Okay, here's another thing. It's just a Luigi's Mansion game, but it's glitched. Like, there's a scratch on the disc. And you know how, like, <laughs> if there's a scratch on the DVD, sometimes it might, like, skip, like, five seconds yep. ahead. And you're just, like, accidentally skipping through walls. Like, you're walking around trying to p- solve a puzzle, and then it accidentally skips and teleports you into a room nearby, and you're like, fuck, I haven't even unlocked this door just, yet, and I'm trapped in here. I'm just picturing Shigeru Miyamoto being really precise about, in game design, where's the right place to put that scratch to make the glitches <laughs> just right? How do we make sure that every game disc has the scratch at the same exact spot? They don't use game <laughs> discs anymore, Holden. They're right. They have to scratch the cartridge. In some way. <laughs> they have to break one of the little gold brackets on the back of the cartridge. And if yep. it's digital, it's just a functioning game. It's great. Yep. It's just Luigi's Mansion 3. Yeah. So it's just really just a downside to buy it physically. But it's a downside to buy it physically anyway, because digital is way better. So good. So good. Word, it's word, so word. good. There you go, Will Foy. Not Will Foy. Sorry. That guy's a baby. Will Clow. <laughs> <laughs> Will Foy is a kid from college who looked exactly like a baby, and we told him all the time, Will Foy, you're a baby. <laughs> <laughs> I love that kid, though. Uh, last one for the night, one, two, switch, crossed with a colonoscopy. <laughs> what does that game look like? Here's what it oh, is. The, it the is. IR sensor on the Joy-Con is the colonoscopy camera. And you just shove it up your butt and count how many balls you got. I was just going to say that. <laughs> you have to like wiggle your butt around like, uh, three. <laughs> <laughs> There's three in there. That HD rumble on the prostate, though, I'm sure feels wonderful. You could actually take this in a lot of different directions. There's the, like, you want to have to, like, rock the baby to sleep gently. Mm-hmm. And that's like you have to, like, get it in your butt gently without making too much fuss. Oh, yeah. No, that's one. not and also too much draw. fuss on the butthole. Not too much fuss of the bus hole. Hard when you get to the joystick. Hard not to get a little fussy at that point because it's a little uncomfortable. <laughs> but then you also have to retract it very comfortably. Yeah, Because if exactly. you pull it out too fast, then it creates a vacuum in there and it takes the intestines and yanks them out of the body. <laughs> <laughs> you don't want that. Don't want a prolapsed anus with just intestines hanging out your butt. Opposite side of that, though, is the quick draw. You have to first put it up your butt quickly <laughs> and then take out and shoot the person really fast quickly as well you have to take the joy con you both you both have a joy con you put it up your butt and then whoever can like l- with their butt muscles shoot it out at the other person the fastest like whoever gets the velocity the fastest velocity i think honestly in that case just the any person who could just do that holy shit you work out your butt <laughs> muscles like way too much <laughs> Here's the other one, though. And this game actually just be the same. The, the walk down the runway one, it just has better tracking because it's in your butthole. It can really detect that hip movement. Oh, yeah. Yeah. That's the next Just Dance. <laughs> <laughs> you're not going to hold it in your hand. You're going to put it up your butt. <laughs> just Dance 2020. <laughs> and it's the toughest so, one, though. It's coming to the, is, the Joy-Cons on Switch, but it's still coming to the Wii. So you got to support the entire Wii Motion Plus, which is a longer Wiimote. <laughs> and you remember the the rubber Wii condoms that they put on there too? You gotta put it on yeah. there too. Yep. The the toughest game to play with one two colonoscopy is you the one where you have to basically unravel the chain. I don't you gotta know like, that one. Oh, so like you have the Joy Con in your hand and you have a chain that's like wrapped around the Joy Con that yeah. you can see on the screen, and you gotta like move it around oh it's like a treasure chest you have the chain around the treasure chest and you have to move the joy oh, around yeah, to yeah, unravel the chain around the treasure chest that one's really tough because you gotta do like cartwheels and spins and rolls like all over the place the somersaults galore. while looking at the screen to figure out how yep. to unravel that chain that one's really tough you know what could be really easy though only then can you take that in your butt and you see what the prize is <laughs> just have a friend spin you and wrap you up in a hammock and then just mm-hmm. unspin really quickly yes boom 
Got Boom. an answer for everything. I love that that's the one that we came up with all the game stuff about. Everything else we just bullshit and we're like, no, we're going to go deep in this colonoscopy. <laughs> Honestly, that sounds like a better game than one, two, switch. <laughs> <laughs> it does. <laughs> oh, that's it for Game on Game Show and also for our podcast. Reminder, go to patreon.com slash respawn aim fire where you can get a chance to vote on what we play each week. You can play with us. Um, sorry, what we play each month for our barf games. You can play with us each week on Tuesday nights on our game night. And you can also get cool-ass Patreon-exclusive wallpapers for Respawn Aim Fire. Pew, 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 pew. Also, life hack, if you subscribe to this month at $1, you get the past two months' wallpapers for free as well. You can just go back what? in the stream and download them. You're welcome, America. <laughs> um, and then also interact with us again by just shouting things into uh, into your voice memos and sending it to respondingfire at jmail.com and that's it and until next week here's our usual sign off just sat down and took a big old piss that's all I could do <laughs>